Hello, hello, hello. This is Lisa Great with the Apostolic Resource Center. How is everybody doing? It is another installment of a prophetic word that the Lord has given me that I want to share with you. It's actually more of a prophetic uh, exhortation for you that have been struggling and feeling like you're in a confined space. I was uh, invited to a friend of mine who is being placed in a ministry position in another city here in the Tennessee area. And she is going to actually develop and oversee a school of ministry. And so she invited a group of us to be able to come and pray for her and celebrate with her. And her new pastor is there and she is a worship leader at this church and she is just doing amazing stuff there. And while I was there, one of the ladies that's on their staff at the church she's joining prayed for my friend and she made a comment about digging wells. And so I spoke to her after because digging wells for you that know me is like a really big deal. And I spoke to her after and I said, hey, so what wells are you digging and what is God showing you and things of that nature? Well, we got to talking and the subject matter came up of redigging the wells according to Genesis 26. And she didn't um, necessarily understand what was being spoken in Genesis 26. And so I began to just share with her some things that the Lord has shown me out of that chapter. Little did I know that the Lord was going to use that very chapter to have a word of prophetic exhortation for each and every one of you and for me as well. And so I want to speak this to you in Genesis chapters 26. For you that know the chapter, it is when uh, Isaac has settled in the land of Gerar and there is a famine in the land and the and Isaac sows in the land, reaps a hundredfold in the same year. I think you guys have probably heard that before. And and the Lord begins to um, tell him, stay there, despite the famine, stay there, and I'm going to bless you. And so in verse 12, it says, now Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And the man became rich and continued to grow richer until he became very wealthy, for he had possessions of flocks and herds and a great household, so that the Philistines envied him. Now this is Abraham's son Isaac, and this is what is said about him. And so then the, the king of the land, Abimelech, he says, hey, you need to go away from us, for you are too powerful for us. And so Isaac departed from there, and he camped in the valley of Gerar. He never left the land of Gerar. He just ended up camping in a new location because the Philistines were jealous of him because of all his flocks and all his stuff. And so he settled in the valley of Gerar. And that word valley actually means the flood, the torrent, the river. <laughs> so it would have been a place that was well watered. And so Isaac goes there and he digs wells and his herdsmen get into some quarrels with the herdsmen of the men of Gerar. And they quarrel, and and excuse me, the quarrel is that they're, they're complaining about whose well it is. Now, don't forget, they are in a flooded, watery land, and they're fighting over wells. And this is important to understand. There's been a lot of fighting over scraps. There's been a lot of quarreling over crumbs. And, and as what the news and the media and the enemies trying to get us to think is that we are in a famine and so people are going to quarrel over crumbs. Granted, there's legit inflation. There is <laughs> realistic gas prices that are a little bit out of control and possibly could get even more out of control. There are interest rates that keep going up and up and up. So they're trying to create a scarcity get the word scare city, scarcity tactic upon people. And that's what was going on here is that there was a fear of scarcity. So they were quarreling over the water or the wells. And so Isaac named the wells based on the quarreling. So one of them he named Esek because they contended with him. And then he dug another well and they quarreled over it. I'm in verse 21 of Genesis 26. And so he named it Sitna. And these words mean contend, quarrel, strife. Like he named the wells according to what was happening there. But here's the prophetic exhortation that I want to give to you. 
because I believe the Lord is speaking this to us right now. And I want to release it to you because even though things look scarce, even things look inflated, even though things look like they're, they're headed in a direction with pinches in the supply chain and things of that nature that are trying to bring scarcity to us. I want you to understand that the Lord is not speaking scarcity. The Lord is not speaking lack. The Lord is not telling us to quarrel over crumbs. He wants us to hear the word that he is speaking to us today. And this is it. It says he moved away from there. Moved away from where? The quarreling and the contending. He moved away from the strife. He moved away from the arguing and contending and quarreling over crumbs. He moved away. So you have to move away from arguments, move away from news that is trying to create fear in you, that is trying to produce scarcity in you, that's trying to get you to hoard and to to prep and to do all these things. You need to move away from those voices because here's why. He moved away from there and dug another well. You see... You have to understand there's an abundance of opportunities to dig wells, but you've got to move away from the contending, the strifing, and the quarreling over scarcity, over crumbs, in order to recognize that there's an abundance of land and there's plenty of room for you to dig another well. And so he moved away from there and dug another well and they did not quarrel over it. Why? Because the first two wells that they quarreled over, Isaac gave over to the herdsmen of Gerar and said, you take them. We're not going to fight with you for them. Do you recognize that people that actually operate in abundance aren't going to argue with you over things that you think you have to have? Abraham did not argue with Lot when Lot wanted to choose the fertile land, which was called Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham said, you pick where you want to go. Because they too, there was quarreling between their herdsmen. So Abraham said, you take the land you want and we'll take what you don't take. So Lot took Sodom and went to the city and went to the fertile land and went to the place that he thought was prosperous. And there was no longer any quarreling because Abraham moved away from him. He's, you've got to understand people that want to quarrel with you, people that want to fight with you, people that want to contend with you, they're fighting over crumbs. We serve a God of abundance. Move away from them and dig another well. (laughs) It's okay to go dig another well. You don't have to contend. You don't have to fight. You don't have to be involved with these people that are so upset about there's not enough water. And the minute you strike water, they're like, I got to have it. There's not enough healing. The minute somebody gets healed, and people start fighting with you about what? As though there's not enough healing. There's not enough deliverance. There's not enough authority. There's not enough power. There's not enough people. They're going to follow what God's sharing with you. So when you feel somebody's contending, quarreling, strifing with you, move away from them. There's plenty of friends out there. There's plenty of ministry opportunity. There's plenty of money. There's plenty of everything. Just move away from them. There's no need to quarrel and fight. So he moves away, digs another well. They did not quarrel over it. And because they didn't quarrel over it, guess what Isaac named it? Rechobeth. Rechobath. R-E-H-O-B-O-T-H. It sounds like Rehoboth. But when I looked it up in the Hebrew, it's Rechobath. <laughs> That's my best Hebrew. <laughs> so he named it Rehoboth or Rechobath. For he said... At last, the Lord has made room for us and we will be fruitful in the land. This is my prophetic exhortation and decree to you. The days of small living where people are fighting over crumbs, where people are quarreling and contending over the small, the one pulpit, the one church, the hundred people that are in the room, the days of quarreling and contending and strife over the small place must come to an end because you must move away from it. And when you move away from it, I prophetically decree over you, Rechobot. God is going to make room for you. God is going to give you space. Do you know that that word Rehoboth or Rechoboth 
in the Greek, in the Hebrew, it's R-E-C-H-O-B-O-T-H, Rechoboth. And it means broad places. And here's what else it means. Oh, you guys are going to love this. This is why I'm decreeing this word over you today. It's, it says it means wide spaces, wide places, or streets. It's the idea that Jehovah has enlarged. It, everything around it has everything to do with wide open spaces, with room. And so here's what it says here in verse 22 of Genesis 26. He moved away from there and dug another well, and they did not quarrel over it. So he named it Rehoboth, for he said, at last the Lord has made room for us and we will be fruitful in the land. My friends, the Lord is making room for you. The Lord is making room for me. The Bible says in Proverbs that your gift will make room for you. What the enemy has tried to put you in a small space, God is saying, I'm setting you in a wide open place. The enemy tried to confine you in a small space, but the Lord is declaring over you, I'm trying to put you in a wide open place. Would you move away from the quarrel? Would you move away from the strife? Would you move away from the contending? Would you move away with, from those that want to argue with you about small crumbs? One pulpit, one microphone, one worship leader, one congregation. Move away. There's a whole world out there full of people that have yet to hear. There's a whole world of people out there that are stuck in religion and they're needing to come into the kingdom. The Lord declares over you, Rechobot, in the name of Jesus. He's making room for you. He's making room for you. Can you sense that in the spirit? There's plenty of space in the kingdom of God. The gate is narrow to get into it, but once you're into it, it's wide open spaces that are holy places. So I am here today on this short video to declare over you Rechobot. Wide open spaces. God is making room for you. I declare it over you today. God is making room for you. Have no fear, my friends. There's no need to quarrel, no need to fight, no need to strife, no need to contend. Move away. Dig another well. Pray another prayer. Sow another seed. Make a new friend. Do whatever you got to do. But I'm telling you, this next one, God's making room for you. I know. I know back here, these wells that have been dug, these things that you have done, small spaces. I get it, right? I get it. But I'm declaring to you it's a new day. Rechobot, the next well you dig is going to make room for you. Dig, my friends. Dig a new well and watch God make room for you. And you will be fruitful in the land. It's what the word says. I declare it now in the name of Jesus. Let it be so. Amen? All right. My name is Lisa Great. I am the president and founder of the Apostolic Resource Center. I have partnered with the Coalition of Free Women. Please check out that ministry and what God is doing. And I just want to encourage you with this word today. Rechobot. I declare it over you. God is making room for you. Have a great day and thank you so much.